Graceway fam, what is up? My name is Tylena, and I want to welcome you to Graceway Online. We are so excited to worship with you this morning, and I know the struggle's real. I have felt all kinds of irritated, discombobulated, and all over the place, but the Lord is kind and He's gracious. And so I've been looking forward to this all week, and we're pumped and ready to serve all of you watching. And Graceway wants to make this time of social distancing fun for the whole family. So we have dedicated material to fit the needs of everyone from your pre-K child to the high school student and it can be found at visitgraceway.org. Para familias que hablan español, we are streaming Pastor Marco's sermon in español via en vivo.visitgraceway.org. And it looks like service is getting started, so let's get ready to worship.
What's up? My name is Brandon and I'm the worship pastor here at Graceway. We are so grateful that you're worshiping with us today. If this is your first time here at Graceway Online, thank you. It brings us a lot of joy to have you here with us. Graceway is building a more intimate setting to meet you right where you are in this time of social distancing. As you sing along with us on the screen, feel free to worship in a way that feels comfortable for you and those around you watching. Take this time to refocus and fuel up for the coming week. Most of us have been home with little or no social interaction for the past few weeks. That takes a toll on the mind and body, but like the prophet Isaiah has written, do you not know? Have you not heard that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He will not grow tired or weary in his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and he increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and the young people stumble and fall. But those who put their hope in the Lord, they will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary and they will walk and not be faint. Let's find peace today in this truth as we continue worshiping together, y'all. Come on, let's sing, y'all. You're seated on the throne of mercy. Your glory shining bright for all to see. Magnificent, every voice. Magnificent with grace unending. You rescue us with love that never fails. Oh God, I will praise you. Hey, come on with the 
just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment, and I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you know. Just gone through the motions. I'm sorry, and I just sing another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. God, that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caught up in your presence. We'll sing this prayer. Nothing else. Come on, that's the cry of our heart. I just want you. 
Hey, Graceway family, Pastor Andrew here. We believe through prayer we have an opportunity to commune with God and a responsibility to resist the plan of the enemy. In the midst of this uncertainty dealing with COVID-19 and all the chaos that comes with it, remember that when God spoke the earth into motion, it was out of chaos. He created the beauty of the universe out of chaos. Imagine all the more what he will continue to do today. As a staff and church family, we want to keep prayer at the forefront. Please send your needed prayers to prayer at visitgraceway.org. Our staff is praying over this request every day. Please pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We come before you, O Lord, seeking your grace and your mercy in this time of need. We thank you that you have been good to us. We thank you that you are a dependable Father. Lord, we ask for your mercy on behalf of our community, on behalf of our nation. Lord, we ask you, O Lord, to have mercy upon us. In the midst of this crisis, Lord, reveal your goodness, for it is your goodness that draws us onto repentance. And Lord, we pray, O Lord, as a church family, and we combine our voices with the many churches and children of yours that are crying out to you, Lord, send the heart. Lord, we want hundredfold harvest out of this crisis. We pray, O oh Lord, that the souls of men will turn unto you, not out of fear, O oh Lord, but because of your goodness, because of your mercy. So, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, send out laborers, O oh Lord, through the airways, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, O oh Lord, for our families that are here in Raytown and in the Kansas the city area. Father, we pray your protection over our family. We pray your mercy over our family. Lord, we pray healing, oh Lord, for families that are suffering. We pray, oh Lord, for your comfort for families that are grieving. The grieving either loss of loved ones or just grieving out of material things. Lord, we commit these things to you for they are important to you. Lord, we pray that your comfort will be felt in every home. Your presence, oh Lord, that no no bound will permeate our families, will inundate our lives. Father, we pray that your word will be light. It will be exalted even in the midst of this crisis. Let your word be exalted in our families. Let it be exalted in our small groups. Lord, your word will not come back to you void, but it shall accomplish that which you have sent it. So we pray in the name of Jesus, let your word go forth. Let it convict the hearts of men and women and let it bring many, oh Lord, unto repentance. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you again for choosing to worship with us. We love you all and we care deeply for you. We miss you guys. Please stay safe. Good morning, Graceway. Pastor Donovan here. Have we told you lately how much we love you and how much we miss you? It is more than you can imagine. We're praying for you too, fervently with all the hope and joy of heaven. As we're all trying our best to keep the gatherings to less than 10 people in accordance with the mandates of the U.S. and Missouri leadership, we want to make sure we are doing all things in love to best serve you. Social distancing means we are losing some of that face-to-face -face time we would get chatting in the building between services. It is important, however, that we stay connected. My personal favorite way to stay connected is using online video meeting platforms like Zoom, Skype, Google Meet, and FaceTime. I encourage you to use these platforms to reach out to those whom you serve alongside, check in on your neighbor, invite someone to join you, and just spread some love and joy. Did I mention we miss you? We cannot wait until we're all together in one building again. But for now, get your Bible, get comfy, and get ready for this week's message from Pastor Tim. Hey, Graceway, Pastor Tim here. Now three weeks into this faith adventure that we are on with COVID-19. Just want you to know, man, I, I, I am praying for you. Uh, 
trying to stay connected to you guys on social media, but really missing you at this point and uh, really missing being able to worship with you. But just very proud of you and the way that you're responding. I know that so many of you are facing challenges, economic challenges, displacement challenges. Some of you are continuing to struggle with, with fear and, and even health. And just want you to know, man, we're, we're available. Uh, love to be able to pray with you, even if we can only do it on the phone or online. We're going to be putting things in place to be able to facilitate that. And so continuing to pray, continuing to trust God together. And we're going to continue today in the book of James. Uh, I'm going to read James 4, 13 through 5, 6, and then we're going to hop right into it. So why don't you just go ahead and grab your Bible. Hopefully you know the routine now. You're in your PJs. You got a loved one near you. You got your coffee ready. And here we go. James 4, 13 through 5, 6. Come now. You who say, today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. For whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin." Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and your silver have corroded, and your, their corrosion will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid treasure in the last days. Behold the wages of the laborers who mowed their fields, which, kept, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you, and the cries of the harvesters had reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. Remember, James is a pastor probably in the 60 AD, the very early stages of this movement that began as the way that became the Christian faith that so many of us are a part of. And James is what we would have called a senior pastor to a church that is experiencing displacement, experiencing fear, experiencing poor communication, experiencing persecution. The reality is that the further we get into this, we're not experiencing persecution, but so many of us, we're, we're concerned, we're afraid, we're displaced. Some of us are sick. So many things that are relevant to us as we get into the book of James, and James is continuing to write to this church and to these church folks, and it's interesting because he doesn't write a letter of comfort. Um, in fact, he's, he's kind of in their face. He's, he's writing a letter of, of challenge, and, and I've, I've tried to think about that because going through our own season of, of doubt and, and fear and, and sickness, you know, the, the initial posture is so many times that we want to comfort one another, and I think that that's, that's good and, and that it's the grace of God that he gives to us to share with one another. But there is something that James seems to understand, that in the midst of a season of pressure, we have an opportunity for growth. And in order for us to grow, uh, sometimes we need a little bit of a challenge. And so before I talk about the pressure that James is going to be talking to his church about and to this church about, I, I want to ask you to just take a minute here. And I want to ask you to consider over the next few days, what in this season is God uniquely trying to teach you? What is God uniquely trying to show you about yourself, show you about himself, show you about the world, show you about your place in it. I think any time that we're in a unique season, God has a unique voice. And sometimes the displacement of our norms puts us in a spot where we, once we get over the, the fear and the, the anxiety of it being different, we can choose to be in a place where we hear God more clearly. So many of the cliches that we say, choosing joy, praying first, leaning into community, listening to God's voice, that, that seem cliched in the midst of normalcy now become very, very uh, strategic and important for you. And so I want to be a good pastor to you and just say, even in the midst of your concern, your fear, some of you have lost a job, some of you are sick, some of you, we're, we're way outside of our normal routines, but what What's God trying to teach you in the midst of this? What is God saying to you in the midst of this that will mean that when we get through this season, and please hear me, we're going to get through this season. God's going to sustain us. God, I believe, is going to strengthen us. And, and I want to 
I want to help you get through this season so that when this season is over, we are stronger, we love Jesus more, we're in a better position to serve our community. And so think about that. What, what is God wanting to say to you? James is going to talk to his, his church and this church about two kinds of pressure. Uh, one is a pressure that crushes, and the second is a pressure that corrects. And I think that we're experiencing both right now, and I want to teach you through James 4.13 through 5.6, and I want to talk to you first about a pressure that crushes. James says it this way. In both kind of paragraphs, he starts, come now, and he addresses a specific audience. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, and he gives us kind of a new narrative. So I want you to think about this with me. I think that we live in a culture, and I think that church folks are as guilty of this as people outside of the church, that we we make wrong assumptions. We assume, I assume, my longevity. Uh, I assume tomorrow, and I question God's provision. I assume tomorrow, and I question God's provision. And I I want you to just acknowledge that that assumption has been challenged in in the world right now. Uh, The assumption that everything's going to stay this way for a long period of time. I mean, we are experiencing a pandemic that began in, in China thousands of miles away, and it was easy for us at that time to say, oh, that's them, and it's what's going on with them, but now it's here, and I just want you to see how quickly and how powerfully our fragility was, was exposed, our fragility as human beings, uh, just how easily we can get sick, our fragility uh, of norms and normalcy, just how easily they're changed, our economy, this, this economy that it is the biggest, the most robust in the world, and a disease is bringing it to its knees. We have an assumption of our longevity that's being deeply challenged right now, and we're shown that, that our longevity isn't what we thought it was, that we are, like Pastor James says, we are, we are like a mist, and it easily comes and easily goes. And so the Bible and Pastor James is going to ask us to flip that. He's going to ask us to flip our assumption of longevity and our questioning of God's provision to rather an assumption of God's provision and a questioning of our longevity. And this is an important thing for you to understand. James is so wise in the way that he goes at this because I think that when I assume my longevity and I and I doubt God's provision in my life, when my longevity is questioned like it is being right now, I've got nothing. Because I, it wasn't ever up to God, and I doubted that God was going to show up, and I thought that it was up to me, when I find out that I can't even get toilet paper, come on somebody, right? When I find out that I'm not going to be able to get the things that I thought that I was going to need, I'm not going to be as healthy as I thought I was going to be. I'm not going to have this job I thought I was going to have. I'm not going to have the money that I thought that I would, because I didn't trust God when my longevity is exposed, I'm left with nothing but panic and fear, and we're seeing that all over the place. I read an article this past week about, about kind of the big tech giants, the, the, the wealthiest people uh, in Silicon Valley, and how there's this trend right now of them uh, doing kind of doomsdayer behavior. A doomsdayer is somebody who's always planning for the end of the world, right? And he's talking about these are real individuals who the more they get, the more fearful they become. And so they're going out and they're getting LASIK surgery so that when the, when the world ends, they'll be able to see better. They're they're stockpiling food. They're getting training in weaponry. They're buying off the grid land. And, and, and you see this pressure of what I have. And if it's up to me and it, and it crushes, it, it crushes us. And I don't want to make light at all about, about COVID-19. This is a legitimate, very scary thing. And, and people are standing before God sooner than they thought they were going to stand. But I do want you to see with spiritual eyes that, that some of our assumptions of what our world would be are being changed right in front of us and, and that James is calling his church and I think our church to acknowledge our assumptions were incorrect and to change them, uh, to be careful that our faith isn't tied to something uh, fragile and uncontrollable. 
when I tie my faith to something that is fragile and uncontrollable, when it fails me, and it's always going to fail me, the failure of it puts a pressure on me that's crushing. And so James is wanting his, his church, and, and, and I want our church to, to say in this time of uncertainty, to recalibrate, to acknowledge the pressure, to acknowledge where the pressure is really coming from, our beliefs and our wrong assumptions, and to reappropriate our faith and our trust in someone, not something, that is trustworthy that is immovable, that is the same yesterday, today, and forever, that's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. You see, pressure is crushing when pressure that isn't supposed to be mine is taken by me. There are things that God wants to take from you today, but he's not going to make you do it. There are pressures that God wants to say, if you'll give me that, I'll carry it for you. But he's not going to make us do it, and we're living in a time where we're watching the pressure crush our culture And God's standing, waiting to take that pressure from you today. I'm not saying he's going to be able to change your circumstance on the spot, but I promise that he can change your perspective on, on the pressure. And James writes to a group of people who are facing uncertainty, who are facing fear, who are facing persecution and displacement, and he doesn't say everything's going to be fine. What he says is, your life isn't as sure as you thought it was going to be. And so let's change our perspective on pressure to giving our pressure to God so that it doesn't crush us. I've said to you throughout this season of COVID-19 that I I believe with all of my heart that the church is going to be able to be strengthened in this. Um, Not that I, I want anybody else to be weakened, but but, you know, pressure it has, has one of a couple effects. It, it can crush and it can harm, uh, but it, it can also correct. And that's what I'd like to see happen at Graceway. You know, I, I go to uh, a, a chiropractor from time to time, and, and that chiropractor, he applies pressure uh, to my back. And can I tell you, when he does that, I, I don't enjoy it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like him pushing and squeezing, and, and I make weird noises, and, and I want it to be over quickly. But, but the pressure appropriately applied uh, corrects some things in my physiology. Can I tell you, there are some things that the pressure of the season that we're in, if we'll let the Holy Spirit appropriately apply them, they can correct some things that when we come out of this season, our spirit and our plans and our purposes and our being can be more aligned with where God is working. Uh, and, and so James says it this way, pressure that corrects. Remember, he said, come now, those of you who say I'm going to live forever, essentially, right? Now he says, come now, you rich, those of you who think that your money is going to take care of this, you're going to be able to buy what you need to buy, have the health care you need to have, be protected and be good. Weep and howl for your miseries are coming upon you. Wow, James, we're not putting that on a, on a, on a card, right? This, this is not a, necessarily a sweet thing to say, uh, but he's talking first to people who are assuming their longevity is going to sustain them, and then he's talking to people who think that their, the structure and systems of their life, economically and otherwise, are going to sustain them. And so I want to ask you just in the next few minutes to just let the Holy Spirit apply some pressure to your life right now. Apply some pressure to your perspectives on on two fronts, around your stuff and around your safety, Uh, and letting the Holy Spirit challenge and reorder and realign some of your priorities and mine in the midst of this season. First, just around your stuff. And I, I, like to call, uh, I like to call it just my stuff, not my possessions, not my belongings, not my investments, not my assets, right? I, 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 I never want to have my self-talk around the things that God has given to me. I never want to take them too seriously. And so they're just, it's just my stuff, right? It's just the stuff that I have. Here's the way the Bible says it, Luke 12 and verse 15, take care and be on guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. I don't know if you're like me. I can feel that 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 idea of taking guard against an oncoming attack, right? I can feel the pressure of covetousness, not only in my own heart, but in culture. Don't don't you have things that you think things would be so much better if I just had this? right? Or if I just had more of this, or if I just had better health care, or a better job, or more toilet paper, or whatever it is, right? Like, uh, I'm thinking that, that my stuff results in quality and valuation. And, and the Bible says, hey, 
Hey, be careful around that. It goes on in Matthew 6 and verse 33, and it says this, I want you to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. And, and this is such a, such a timely word for us because there are things that we need right now, right? We, we need good information. We need good health care. We need certain tangible things. And, and God says, if you want your heart to be aligned properly, if you want this pressure to be correcting, you got to put your priorities in order. And so in the midst of all the things you think you need, the thing you need the most is God right now. Seek God first, and he'll put the other things in order. So let me say it to you a couple different ways. One is, in the midst of this, don't react disproportionately. Instead, respond appropriately. There's a difference between reacting and responding. One of my favorite kind of memes or YouTubes right now is, is, is from the show Ellen, and, uh, and she likes to, to terrify and scare her guests. And so somebody will be hanging out in the box right beside and, and, uh, and, and the, the guests will just be talking along and they'll be in mid sentence. Someone will pop out and they have a, they have a reaction, right? They, ah, or, you know, they just, and, and, it, and for some reason it just cracks me up every time, even though I know it's coming. Some of us though, we live our lives uh, with reaction. We live our lives from the next scare to the next circumstance to the next instance, and we go from ah, ooh, ah, ee, ah, and that, that's just the cadence of our life because we feel pressure and we feel different sets of news and different scares and different things, and we're just always reacting. Let's be honest with there disproportionately. Biblically, though, we want to we want to respond. We want to be responders, and we want to respond appropriately. So, when it comes to my stuff, as my stuff feels like it's being squeezed, I need to acknowledge that that squeeze. Yes, there's some legitimacy to it, but the squeeze should also it also reveals my belief systems around it. And so, let me help you in this way. In the midst of this season, when it comes to your stuff, don't hoard stuff greedily. Don't hoard stuff greedily. Instead, steward wisely. Some of us, when pressure comes, we start to hoard. I, I watched a guy on the news the other day had 18,000 jars of hand sanitizer. Eight, 18,000 jars. I mean, he could literally just sit in his house and put hand sanitizer on his hands for the rest of his life, right? Uh, and, and, and he's hoarding. And even Christians, right? Like how much food do we need? How much toilet paper do we need? How much hand sanitizer do we need? How many movies do we need? We, we get into this thing when pressure happens that we just think, I just need more. But God is, is not calling us to do that. Can I tell you the things that you have, you're, you're not to hoard, you're to be a steward of? And I wonder if you um, maybe need to ask God, God, the things you've already given me, how do you want me to steward it in this season? I'm feeling some pressure around it, and it's, it's showing some belief systems that I don't think are in line with your spirit. And this pressure, I don't want it to crush me. I want it to correct me. And so when it comes to my stuff, how, how do you want me to steward it? And I can tell you that he's going to say to you, don't spend it selfishly, share it generously. Isn't it interesting that whenever uh, we have a hypothetical, I might need this when, uh, we tend to want to hoard. And even if somebody needs it now, there's something in us that says, I need to hang on to this because I might need it then. Uh, and I think that in a season like this, the church is going to be the most beautiful if we assume that God's going to provide for us and we share generously. You know, the reason that I, I, I'm not generous is because I'm afraid that God's not going to replenish it. Uh, I'm afraid that God's not going to take care of me, and so I need to hoard. I need, I need to be in control of that. I need to it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. And, and so I hoard stuff and I buy more than I need and I buy stuff that, that makes me feel better or helps me with cabin fever. And I think the church is most beautiful when we're working off the assumption that God saved us, that God's got us, that God's going to provide for us. I know that some of you are living in the lack right now, but, but the church is the most beautiful when we're taking care of one another, when we're seeing our stuff, we're stewards of it, not owners of it, and we're not to hoard or spend selfishly, but we're, we're to be generous. We're partnering with schools right now and different organizations, but I want to ask you for you, what's God saying to you about your stuff? What's God saying to you about the things that he's given you and what you need and, and what your neighbor needs in, in the midst of this? And there's pressure 
and it's legitimate, um, and I want to comfort you to the best of my ability in it, but I also want to challenge you that in this season when we're afraid that it will run out, do we believe, do we assume our own longevity, or do we assume that God's going to take good care of us even in the midst of it? When it comes uh, to our stuff, here, listen to what the Bible says, Proverbs eleven twenty four through 25, one who gives freely yet grows all the richer, and another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Whoever brings blessing, listen, will be enriched. And the one who waters will himself be watered. God says, I love giving to people that I know are going to be generous. I love giving to people that when pressure comes, it doesn't crush them, it just corrects them. They receive the exposure of the pressure and they let my Holy Spirit tweak that back into, into alignment uh, and, and, and they follow me in faith and they don't see their stuff as their own, but they're stewards of it. They're generous. Even in the midst of pressure, God says, I love taking care of those kind of folks. I love giving to them because I know they won't think it's theirs. They won't get greedy. Uh, they won't hoard. And I, I want to challenge us, Graceway, in the midst of this. We're three weeks into this and let's be honest with one another. We're, we're halfway. We're not even halfway. The, the, the mayor asked for eight weeks of no gatherings over 50, and the, and the, the president, um, you know, was saying 10. And we have people in our, in our city and in our church who, who have needs right now. And I, I, I just want to ask you, what's God saying to you about your stuff? This isn't a guilt trip. This is a, when pressure comes, is it going to crush or is it going to correct us around these things? Next, James talks about um, around our safety. And man, he, he, James is, is, is a good pastor, but James ain't playing, right? And, and, and James uh, wants us to ask a couple questions around our safety. I want, I want you to remember where your provision comes from. The reason that James challenges the rich is because he's working off the assumption that they think that they have built something rather than been given something. And in this time of pressure, listen to what Jesus says, Matthew 6 and verse 11. When we pray, we need to pray, give us this day our daily bread. You know, when I'm under pressure and I don't think that I'm going to have enough, uh, I, I pray different, don't you? Um, I, I pray different. I, I, don't, I don't assume tomorrow, I say, God, would you just give me what I need today? And I want to challenge you, church, to begin to pray that. God, would you keep me safe today? Would you give us what we need today? And tomorrow, I'm going to ask you this again because you're going to hear me today and tomorrow. I'm not going to assume tomorrow. I'm not going to assume my lo longevity. I'm going to assume your gracious provision in my life. And, and I'm going to ask you uh, to keep me safe. And I'm going to ask you to keep those I love safe. I'm going to ask you to give me what you know that I need. And I'm going to ask you to be present with me in the midst of it. I, I want to say to you, Graceway, your safety is not up to you. Your safety isn't up to you, and if you think that it is up to you, it's gonna, that pressure is going to crush you, and you're going you're gonna to be out there getting weaponry training and, 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 and storing up food and, and trying to get off the grid and, and doing all of these things when, when the exact opposite is what our city needs. Our city needs us to lean in in faith, in a belief that's bigger, in, in a God that's bigger and saying, God's going to take care of me today. And if he gives me tomorrow, he'll take care of me tomorrow. I want to challenge you. I know we're scared, man. I, I got three, three kids and a wife and people that I love, and I, I don't want them to get sick. But it's not up to me. It's not up to me. It's up to God. And I, I'm asking God um, to provide and to protect. I want to ask you to do the same. Uh, I want you to remember where your provision comes from, and I want you to rest in God's protection. Listen, listen to Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 32. And I, and I think it's such a, such a good and gracious word. This comes from the mouth of Jesus. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. Don't be anxious about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body or what you will put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. And then God gives us these examples in his kindness. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet their heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil or spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. 
But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles, people outside of the church, right? They seek after those things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them all. In the midst of this pressure, legitimate pressure, my heart for you is that that pressure wouldn't crush you. And that if you're feeling a crushing sensation, that you would, you would think about your beliefs, that you would think about your trains of thoughts and whose wisdom you're following. But that rather this pressure in the midst of difficulty and fear and uncertainty and displacement, that it would correct some things, that if we're going to be honest with one another, that they need corrected. We need to be aligned with the Spirit of God. And we need to ask ourselves some questions about who's keeping us safe and who's providing for us and who's got our back and, and who's in charge and, 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 and what is God asking of me and saying to me in this time. I don't say this to, to frustrate you. I say this because I love you and because I'm asking myself these questions. And, and I believe that if we'll ask ourselves these questions that God will give us good answers that are for his glory and our joy and and so if we'll continue to lean into one another, stay connected to one another in, in all of the ways that we know how, social media, texting, old school, making phone calls, right, to one another, staying in touch. What do you need? How can I pray for you? If we'll continue to be in touch with one another, if we'll lean in to the presence of God, I promise you that God will show up and God will do what only he can do. And God will strengthen our church and God will be glorified in the midst of this. And we'll look back on this season, not not having enjoyed it, but having seen God be faithful in it. Not wanting it to happen again, but saying in the midst of it, God was still good and still kind and still faithful and still showed up and he taught us things that we wouldn't have learned any other way. And we love him more and we look more like Jesus because of it. And so I love you today. I'm proud of the way that you're responding already. Um, thank, thankful to be a part of this church. Thankful to be your pastor. It's the honor of a lifetime. I want you to know we're praying for you. We're available. We want to help in any way that we can. I love you so much, and by God's grace, I'll see you soon. Let me pray for you right now. God, we, we come to you right now, your children who you love, your children who you see, your children who know you know God right now. Um, we have fears. We have doubts. Uh, some of our norms, our assumptions are, are being just profoundly challenged right now. And God, we need your presence. We need your spirit. God, we need you to speak to us. We need you to be moving in and through us, God, meeting not only our physical needs, but our emotional, spiritual, and relational needs. God, we say that you are more than enough. We say that you are good. We say, God, that whatever correction you need to bring into our lives, even in the midst of this pressure, God, we receive it. God, we want to be sanctified, be changed, be built up to be looking more like your son. We receive, God, the privilege that it is to be in our city during this time, to be able to be a city on a hill, to be able to be a light, to be able to be an encouragement, to, to provide and, and to exhibit faith and hope and calm and peace. And so, God, I pray for every person who's watching right now, for every person who calls Grace Way home, that you would give them what they need, that you would protect, that you would bless, that you would show yourself strong on our behalf in the midst of our weakness. You say, God, you, you promise us that when we were weak, you would be strong, that when we lack wisdom, that you would give us what we needed. And so we ask you for those things now. Let your will be accomplished on earth as it in, is in heaven. In this season of uncertainty, God, do what only you can do for your glory and our joy. We love you, and we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. I love you. I'll see you soon.
We hope you enjoy worshiping with us today. I know it did my heart and mind some good to refocus on what is most important. The resources for pre-K to high school are still available at visitgraceway.org. And also, Graceway would love to continue connecting throughout the week, so give us a follow at Facebook and Instagram. If you're a regular part of Graceway family and you want to give or just desire to worship through giving, it can be done online at visitgraceway.org slash give. And that's all for this week, fam. Remember the words of Jesus in John 14. He said, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. So go in peace, friends. It is well with your soul.